uh, today I am going to discuss simple yet important clinical uh, scenario in chromatology. I name it as at the verge of suspicion. This is uh, an unusual presentation with chromatoid arthritis. So let me introduce the patient. He's a 40-year-old carpenter from Malasmul. And he's a returning from Middle East uh, two months uh, prior to the first presentation. And he's a father of one child and an ethanol abuser. And uh, actually, he uh, presented with three months history of inflammatory type polyarthritis. He had to leave his job uh, as a carpenter at Middle East because of this uh, disabling arthritis. And there was no Features suggestive of spondyloarthropathy, crystal arthropathy, or any other uh, connective tissue disorder. Uh, on examination, he has had uh, 28 peripheral uh, inflamed peripheral joints, including all proximal interphalangeal joints, menopharyngeal joints, both disc joints, elbow joints, shoulder joints, knee joints, and the ankle joints. And apart from that, he has had fine reputation uh, over the both lung bases. And, uh, on the investigation wise, the initial uh, inflammatory markers were high, uh, ESR 57 and CRP was 40. Uh, though there was uh, absence of serology like uh, rheumatoid factor, anti CCP, and HLA B27, uh, diagnosis was still made according to the uh, 2010 ACR criteria. And uh, other investigation ultrasound shows. Uh, it also active arthritis with the uh, the synovial uh, hernia and the chest X-ray is still normal and lung function uh, test shows restrictive type um, restrictive type with reduced uh, diffuse uh, carbon monoxide uh, capacity is around twenty six percent and uh, we have done the HRCT it shows the uh, uh, non-specific interstitial pneumonitis and um, other basic investigation wise, uh, ANA was negative, MAR2 test initially negative, and uh, we have done the retroviral screening, which also uh, became negative. And uh, she was she was started on methylated low dose 12.5 milligram weekly with uh, HCQ and sulfur saliskin, uh, and intermittent uh, initially prednisolone uh, to control this uh, disease. And this is the initial HRCT. It shows the increased reticular nodular shadowing over the lung bases, which uh, you know the uh, NSIP. And um, in 2020 February, that means after about uh, three months of initiation of the initial treatment, uh, he had admitted to the uh, hospital again with the worsening shortness of breath. Initial MMRC grade three uh, shortness of breath, and uh, but joint symptoms are under. Control only three joints were uh, tender, uh, namely right knee joint, right wrist joint, and the right elbow joint. Uh, this is activity score uh, uh, like between uh, moderate disease activity. Initial infections were excluded, and uh, 2D echocardiogram was normal, and uh, we suspected possible uh, this uh, MDH induced uh, pneumonitis, but uh, again, CT, uh, repeat CT shows there was no any uh, interval changes. Uh, anyhow, uh, we changed MTX, uh, we switched the uh, MTX to MMM to so save side and followed up. And um, patient was well responded to this medication, but uh, in 2020 August, that means after about uh, uh, 10 months of initial diagnosis, uh, patient present with the PO, PO for two weeks duration. And um, apart, apart from the fever, he has had right side knee joint and right, uh, right side elbow joint swelling uh, for one month duration. Uh, he also complained of progressive shortness of breath for two months duration. On an examination, uh, we found that he's having left side total effusion as well as right side uh, knee joint effusion. Uh, chest X-ray and ultrasound, ultrasonography of chest confirmed the presence of left side pleural effusion. 
uh, his CSR was not much elevated from the beginning. Uh, it was 43 and CRP, all, CRP also 40. And uh, this time we have performed the uh, acid fast bacilli, which was negative on this sputum. And a uh, respiratory team also in, involved the management of this patient and they have performed the uh, bronchoscopy and bronchial lavage. But TB PCR, TB culture, and fungal studies also became negative. Uh, at that time, chloroquine was not aspirated and AD was not done. And a uh, respiratory team want, wants us to start allopurinol to cover the uh, possible respiratory pathogen, and we prescribe allopurinol for two, two weeks duration. And um, uh, for right side knee joint filling, other some short uniform synovial thickening with echogenic synovial synovial fluid, which is compatible with uh, rheumatoid uh, joint. In the follow-up uh, for uh, last. Uh, uh, Subsequent follow-up, his ESR was uh, persistent elevated more than 50, but, but not more than uh, 100, and CRP also uh, persistent elevated. And we have attributed this to the uh, active joints, active uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, other base, all basic investigations were normal. Uh, during last one year, that means uh, uh, from 2020, August to 2021, uh, July, uh, his right knee joint has been aspirated several times due to recurrent accumulation of uh, joint fluid. Uh, after excluding of uh, septic arthritis several times, we have given the uh, steroid injection to control his uh, discomfort. Uh, despite good drug adherence and uh, this control of disease activities poor during this uh, follow up period, and uh, always. This is activity score was more than uh, five. And uh, we plan to restart methotrexate for low dose and uh, sulfur has been increased to one gram TDS from the 500 BD and elephantomized was added and uh, intermittent steroid was prescribed. And we plan to uh, give reduximab uh, as patient is not responding to oral medication. This is the 2020 July clinic visit. Uh, you can see the obvious right side knee joint swelling and the right side uh, right wrist joint swelling. In the right third finger is swollen, probably is a uh, form of dactylitis. And uh, right elbow joint also swollen. You can see the uh, rheumatoid nodules as uh, in the picture. If you can remember this. These three joints were uh, highly inflamed since the beginning of the, uh, uh, this uh, disease. Uh, this is the difference between two uh, X-rays of right knee joint. Uh, in 2020 August, uh, there was no much difference, uh, much abnormality we can detect it. But in 2020 July, there was a uh, periarticular osteophenia and marked uh, reduced joint space, uh, joint space. And this is the joint space, uh, joint fluid aspiration. Uh, with, although we have uh, aspirated several times, I have given only uh, two uh, results uh, between two uh, between these uh, months. And you can see the increased uh, uh, WBC with lymphocytic predominance, but still there was no uh, malignant cells, crystal or bacteria. But appearance wise, become more parallel. This is ultrasound scan of the right elbow joint, which shows the multiple echogenic foci with septation with joint effusion and the synovial thickening. Uh, joint, uh, this septation was not uh, much compatible with the uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So we suspect the TB, uh, TB arthritis and uh, AFB and TB PCR was done uh, over the this joint fluid and both the positive over the both joints. We aspirated uh, right elbow joint and the right knee joint in separate uh, occasions and both were positive. And but in this case was still normal and this sputum may be also negative. So we started on anti-TB treatment for uh, TB arthritis. 
unfortunately this patient was on multiple uh, hepatotoxic medication being a ethanol abuser uh, mta sulfalpin and uh, leflunomide all causing this uh, possible drug induced liver injury with the ATT and treatment was interrupted and uh, this during this recovery period of drug induced liver injury we admitted with the cough and fever to uh, this general hospital from Mangota. Uh, initially COVID was ex excluded but sputum become positive only this time. Unfortunately this is the uh, chest x-ray which shows multiple uh, cavities uh, predominantly over the uh, bilateral agencies. And they have performed the CT, HRCT, which was uh, further confirmed the presence of bilateral uh, apical uh, cavitatory lung lesions. So we, uh, we finally started the SHE regime, that is tropomycin, uh, isonacid, and ethambutol uh, with the uh, collaboration of respiratory team. And uh, he apparently responded and currently being followed up at uh, District General Hospital, Ambansar. So, uh, so it is simple case. I think it's an important uh, clinical scenario for the uh, rheumatology. And uh, what was the what are the practical questions we have faced uh, on this patient? So, first question is: Was initial diagnosis correct? Because we have diagnosed the rheumatoid arthritis, uh, but uh, according to the criteria, but without uh, rheumatoid fat and uh, anti CCP uh, positivity. Uh, so, then, second question at which point TB should have been diagnosed on this patient? So, we will uh, we'll try to answer this, uh, these two questions during the uh, discussion uh, section. And uh, you know that uh, tuberculosis is most versatile uh, infection. Uh, sample to present with. There is no exception for musculoskeletal TB as well. And it accounts for 35% per of extra pulmonary tuberculosis. That means all uh, about 3% of all TB cases in the form of spondylitis. Spondylitis account for about 40% of all musculoskeletal tuberculosis. And uh, infectious peripheral arthritis, as in our patients, and uh, inflammatory arthritis, that is the concept disease. Uh, sometimes osteomyelitis, uh, prosthetic joint involvement, and even they can present uh, as sacroiliitis, dactylitis, and tenosynovitis is exact resembling uh, spondylitis. Uh, with about inflammatory arthritis of uh, TB, it's called, it's called as uh, tuberculous rheumatism and concept disease sometimes. And this is the inflammatory joint disease without any evidence of active TB of this affected joint. That means a, a PCR culture and AFP should be negative over the affected joint. And uh, usually associated with the active pulmonary TB or extra pulmonary TB or even in the biliary TB. But there are some case reports uh, in the literature even without uh, having active TB. That means before the active TB or after the treatment of uh, active TB, they can present, present as uh, this sponsored disease. Uh, all the pathogenesis is unclear. Believe that uh, probably uh, this is the immune mediated uh, reaction in joint capsule of uh, synovium. And um, usually they present with that poly symmetrical polyarthritis or oligoarthritis. And they present with oligoarthritis, most affected joint is ankle joint followed by knee and the wrist joint. The combination of uh, these joints can be seen. Uh, usually they Response will to the antibiotics chemotherapy without any residual effects or any chronicity. Uh, some authors have suggested that given the diagnostic criteria for cancer uh, disease, uh, there are many, but uh, I prefer this one because this, this article uh, have studied most of the patients in the literature, that is around 200 patients, and they have suggested this. Uh, diagnostic criteria. These are not uh, guidelines or any concluded by the world authority, but I think we can uh, take it as a guide for diagnosis. They say the evidence of active extra articulate vocabulary should be there to uh, start with. 
an aromatic manifestation for more than one joint, the oligoarthritis or polyarthritis. Uh, there should not be any axial involvement, yeah. vertebral column or sacral impairment. If there is any features suggestive of this axial involvement, it should be acute tuberculosis of the uh, of the axial side, not the this uh, disease. And uh, laboratory findings are usually non-specific. That means the rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP usually negative, but uh, there are some uh, rare presentation of uh, onset disease with the presence of rheumatoid factor as well as anti-CCP. Uh, this disease should be completely remit after tuberculosis chemotherapy. And the, uh, as I mentioned before, there was no chronicity of no articular sequelae. And uh, especially we should exclude the other rheumatological disorder which can be the conscious disease and the rheumatoid arthritis in our patient. So could it be conscious disease at initial presentation of this patient? And someone may, may argue that this patient has had uh, implemented type polyarthritis later diagnosed as well as through pulmonary baby. Uh, I think uh, our diagnosis is solid on the ground of uh, uh, 2010 Hebla ACR rheumatoid arthritis criteria, and initially the lung involvement is NSIP, not the, the cavitative lung lesion, and, is, and it is uh, confirmed with repeated HRCT twice. And uh, this joint disease is uh, well responded to MTX, not for the uh, antitubers chemotherapy initially. So uh, I think the, our initial diagnosis was correct. That is uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, just to remind you the uh, 2010 ACR criteria, this uh, he fulfilled uh, three domains out of four, out of four, and obtained a seven, uh, yes, seven mark to diagnose the three rheumatoid arthritis. That means uh, more than ten joints were involved, and uh, for more than six weeks with the. Uh, in high implementation markers. Oh, this is the timeline. Uh, if you can remember, he present with present the initial 2019 November with the polyarthritis and the uh, HNCT shows in SIP and 2020 February again present the exception shortness of it, but investigation was completely normal. We shift to the MMA from uh, MTX and uh, 2020 August, we are shifted present with the fever, local effusion, and the knee joint effusion. I think this is the place we should have diagnosed, uh, or, uh, should have catched the, this mild bacteria. But unfortunately, we have lost suspicion of uh, TB at this point. And uh, uh, what we have not done is uh, chlorophyll aspiration and the knee joint aspiration uh, targeting the TB. Because we have done other, every other thing uh, like uh, uh, bronchus, bronchial laval, bronchoscopy, uh, the HRCT, and everything, but not the uh, knee joint effusion and the total uh, total free effusion or even the biopsy. So after 2020, patient continuously deteriorated and uh, with recurrent knee joint uh, um, uh, aspiration, and we have escalated the treatment. Uh, adding more immunosuppression to the patient, and patient is on multiple immunosuppression medication with on top of, of on top of this uh, inflamed joint. There are enough factor to factor him to uh, acquire tuberculosis. Uh, so a little bit about infectious peripheral arthritis of tuberculosis, and uh, this this is uh, the active disease of the uh, joint that is not. Uh, different from uh, onset disease. This, these are tend to occur at large joint as a usually as monoarthritis, but up to 15% of these patients need present with uh, polyarthritis. Hip joint is most commonly affected, followed by the knee joint, and but uh, ankle joint, wrist joint, and shoulder joint are also affected, affected as well as the prosthetic joint. Uh, in a one series, up to 10% of all septic, suspected septic arthritis uh, diagnosed when have tuberculosis in the, this uh, cited particular article. So these are the slowly progressive uh, 
uh, swelling, pain, and reduced range of movement in affected joints. So they usually call it as a uh, cold uh, joint because absence of bone and erythema. And uh, at the, only at the late stage of the course, uh, they it, uh, this joint become deformed and uh, even the sinus uh, discharge in sinuses. Uh, only one third of this patient with skeletal TB reported TB and loss of pain. They are this, uh, the classical symptom, symptoms of TB. So it is very difficult to diagnose clinically. Uh, so we, we diagnostic delay may vary the physician's uh, factor as well as the uh, patient's factor. So initially, we can suspect the diagnosis of tuberculosis because of high inflammatory markers and uh, inflammatory type joint fluid desperation and the imaging. But those these are non-specific. And uh, one time, uh, radiologists have described this hemisphere trial in plain radiogram. This also not that of money. And uh, it uh, consists of periartical osteopenia, joint space narrowing, and subcontral erosion. It's a uh, right side. Picture was taken from the internet and the, this, uh, this website. And right side uh, picture was uh, sexual picture from our patient. So our patient has had uh, this periodical osteopenia and joint space narrowing. Uh, but I'm not sure that there's some contrary erosions. So definite diagnosis can be secured with the uh, the positive culture from this aspiration as well as the uh, his, uh, the demonstration of histopathological uh, evidence. In this case, I think very low more synovial biopsy and the, uh, yes, synovial biopsy. So, treatment essentially with antibiotic treatment uh, really from the six months to uh, 12, uh, 12 months according to the uh, response, according to the response. And uh, sometimes surgical intervention may need in the form of arthrotomy, curative and the diagnosis. So uh, at the end of this uh, clinical scenario, the take-home message is first you have to suspect the TB, and then don't lose the suspicion. Again, you suspect the TB and again until you find out the exact cause. So we were uh, able to publish this article in a uh, international in an international peer review journal, and uh, I would uh, read the conclusion there for you all. TB should be considered as an important differential diagnosis for chronic uh, arthritis with a high degree of suspicion, particularly where TB is endemic. Clinicians should reconsider the possibility of tuberculous arthritis even when well established another background diagnosis is present to explain the joint thing, as in our patient. It is well established, but on top of that, the patient has uh, multiple joint effusion uh, recurrent, which is not compatible with uh, his, um, which, is, which is not correspondent to initial treatment. So, thank you very much for your time and attention. So, I would like to thank my patient who has given the consent to uh, publish the case as well as the person. And uh, I would like to thank my uh, consultant, Dr. Kalim Deshapri and Dr. Pahit Vishanayake, as well as uh, Omar Tulis team, teaching hospital, Karapiti. Uh, thank you very much. If there is any question, I would like to answer. Uh, sorry? Yes, yes. Affected, yes. That, uh, that previous, uh, if you can remember, uh, 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 this, this article says, uh, yeah, this is not, not this uh, cited one, this uh, up to 15% of the uh, musculoskeletal, that means peripheral arthritis, is multiple joint affected. Basically, the uh, combination of knee, wrist, and the hip joint. It is published, yes. Hmm. 
अभी मेंशन की है एल्बोट इन नाइनटीन पेजेस एल्बोट के लिए एंड ब्रेक ब्रेक फीचर्स पर बट रिकॉर्डिंग फीचर्स पर देर आर हिस्ट्री ही एंड आंसर साउंड्स के एज ऑफ सब्जेक्ट पर सीजी वन स्कैन हिस्ट्री एंड इसे टेक्निकली देर वाज फीचर एक्चुअली फॉलोइंग कर रही थी ये ना